In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of timeline editing inside Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is likely the screen that you'll get when you first open up Premiere. All you have to do is hit create a new project. From there, you can name your project. So I'm going to name this Premiere Tutorial. And then you want to point the location to a folder where you want to save this. So I've already done that, but just hit that button for browse right there. And then you can select the folder wherever it is on your computer that you want to save this. If you're on a Mac, this will look a little bit different, but it should function the same and then hit select folder. And once you're done, you can just hit OK. So this tutorial is going to be specifically for people that want to use audio and video as two separate things. Since when I was actually looking for tutorials to learn myself, it was actually really hard for me to find ones that covered that. Most of them tend to assume that you have your audio and video in one, like a cell phone or a standard video recorder. But if you're like me and you're recording your screen with a second audio source, or perhaps you're recording a game, then this one might come in super handy for you. So first up, we need to import our stuff into this project window right here on my screen. To do that, it's actually quite easy. Just double click on the screen to bring up the browser, and then you have to navigate to the folder where you have your footage saved. So I'm gonna to go to the stock footage folder, and I'm just gonna highlight over both of these for the AVI, which is my video, and I use Bandicam as my screen recorder, and then the .wav audio file where my audio is located, and I use Audacity, which is a free program for recording audio that's actually really nice and easy to use. So I'm going to open up both of these. And now inside here, it brings in my desert.avi file as well as my desertaudio.wav file. So I'm just going to click on my desert.avi file and then click and hold and then drag it over into my timeline. When I do that inside the project window, you can tell a new file is created and it's called desert since the file I dragged over first was desert.avi. And this is the composition file. The composition file basically saves all the audio and video edit data, so that way it isn't actually deleting or removing your audio or video files. It's saving all that information inside this composition file, so that's really handy. You can just click on the name to rename it to something else if you want to, so I'll do this and just rename it Tutorial, and then click off of it to save that name change. And next, I'm going to click, hold, and drag on my audio, and then drag it into the timeline just below the video. You want to make sure it snaps to the far left side just like this. You can tell it's doing that because these two little arrows, the white arrows pointing down, will appear. You can also hold shift to make sure that it snaps in place. So there's a few things I like to do now once I've brought my video and audio in. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to hit V on my keyboard so that the arrow is selected. It's a white arrow. And I'm just going to click, drag, and hold over both of these items like this. And then I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to select group near the top here. And that'll just make sure when I move these, it moves them both at the same time. Clicking and dragging your audio and video will just move it around the timeline. But you tend to want to make sure it's starting at the far left here at zero seconds so that there isn't any weird black screens. I just ungrouped these quick to show you one other thing though. Like let's say that your audio and video aren't synced up and you have to sync it up before you start. I tend to sync mine as I start by running my audio and video recorder at the same time. And since you don't see my mouth, it isn't critical that it's exactly straight on. But right here on the bottom of this timeline window, there's a bar, and it's very subtle and it might be a little bit hard to see at first, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to spot. So there's this little slider bar right here, and I'm gonna drag that to the left, which will just make my timeline a little bit smaller so I can see the changes in audio and video a little bit easier. And I like to have about 10 seconds, roughly 10 seconds inside this timeline bar, so that it's really easy for me to spot the visual cues in my audio that I've grown really accustomed to seeing. And if you wanna just make this a little bit simpler to see here, you can right click on the video panes. The video panes are labeled V1, V2, and V3, and the audio ones are A1, A2, and A3. If you have multiple sources of audio, be sure to drag all those sources of audio into these different panes first. But once you have everything in here that you need, just right click on this pane and then select delete tracks. If you select delete track, it'll just delete that one singular empty track. Selecting delete tracks lets you delete all of them at the same time, so it saves you a little bit of time. So I'm gonna check delete video tracks and then check delete audio tracks and make sure these both say delete empty tracks. There's different ones if you wanna delete just one specific one. And then I'm gonna hit okay. So that simplifies my timeline just a little bit. And then I'm gonna hover over underneath the A1 where my audio track lives on this little bar below it. And I'm gonna click, hold, and then drag this down. So when I do that, my audio suddenly becomes actually visible and usable for me to see the peaks and valleys of the different words that I say. That is really the fundamental basis of how I edit, is I look at the way the audio is going, and then I can set in and out points based on where the audio is. So each audio point right here, this could be the start of a word, and then this could be the end of the word or a particular phrase. But like, let's say your audio isn't perfectly synced up and you have to do that first. You can just click on this 
audio track, but you'll need to make sure these are ungrouped first. So you can right click and then hit ungroup if it is currently grouped and it should go ahead and do that for you. And then you can just drag this audio to the left or the right. And up at the top here next to these numbers that signify the amount of time that we're in the video, you can just click on that to bring this little scrubber right here to where the time is and then hit the space bar to play. And I usually just hit the space bar and keep playing and making tiny little adjustments until my audio and video are synced up. And once they are, I just save that point and make sure I don't move my audio or video or I make sure to group them up again. So I'm just going to move this back off to the side here because I know that this particular audio and video is synced up all right. Now I'm going to drag over both these once again, right click and then group them up. So here's how I edit video in Premiere. It's actually very, very easy to do and it's very quick to do as well. So the I and the O keys stand for in and out points on your timeline here. So the I key on your keyboard sets the in point or the start point for your edit. And then if I were to click right here to move my little timeline scrub right here, so this will be the end point of my edit and I hit O, you can tell that it has now highlighted the section that I have highlighted between my in and out points. And to delete that, there's two different ways you can do it. They both act the exact same. You can either hit the apostrophe sign or you can hit Alt and backspace or Option and backspace. So I'm just gonna do that quick by hitting the apostrophe sign here. And as you can tell, it not only deletes that space, but it also brings all of my video that was in front of it backwards. That's called a ripple delete, and it's a very cool feature inside Adobe Premiere. It saves you a ton of time since you don't have to manually go in and adjust all of your audio and video tracks to be synced together once again. But let's say for some reason you didn't want to do that, you just want to perhaps remove a chunk and then have some kind of different video or different audio play in its place. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard to set an in point right here, and then I'm going to move this timeline scrubber over just a little bit and hit O on my keyboard to set the out point. And then there's two ways you can get straight up delete a section, and that's with the delete button right there. And I'm going to hit control Z to go backwards, or you can also use the semicolon button, which will also just straight up remove this. So as you can tell, it didn't automatically move this content right here to the left to match up to the side. And if you wanted to bring these together manually, you'd have to click this and then ungroup it if it was grouped. Then using V on your keyboard to bring up this arrow, select over this content right here and manually bring it over. And once again, keep an eye out for these little downward pointing white triangles. They'll let you know that this is perfectly aligned. These video clips will want to snap into place by default. So that's just kind of a helpful way to go ahead and make some simple changes. But that's really the basis of editing. It's actually very easy. I just hit my space bar to preview certain sections of audio and video, and I pay attention to what I need to change or make edits to. And then I set my in and out points by hitting I and then O between a certain section. And once I know the edit is right, and if I wanna make small edits too, you can just highlight over the left and the right points right here in the timeline bar. You can just click hold and then drag this to modify the selection until the selection is where you need it to be. And then hit alt and backspace to remove that and move everything else backwards with a ripple delete. Or you can also just use the apostrophe sign on your keyboard. And to move around your timeline, I use the hand tool, which is the H key on my keyboard. So almost all the time I have my hand tool selected here. And then you just click and drag and move around your different audio sections. So like, let's say right here, I can tell this is a totally blank spot where I just want to remove this. So there's not dead space in the recording. I can hit I on my keyboard for the in point, move the timeline over by clicking on my timeline, which brings a scrubber over there, hit O on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna hit the apostrophe sign, or I could also hit Alt, backspace or option backspace on a Mac and then it will move that and ripple delete it. So it's really easy to go in there and do that. And as far as audio goes, I'm just going to bring this timeline up a little bit by hovering between the audio and video points and then just dragging this up, which I'll move these up to make them a little bit higher. The audio can be adjusted by hitting V on your keyboard to make sure your arrow is selected. And then this bar on the audio track signifies the decibel level. So if you move the bar up, it'll become louder and you can tell it has a positive decibel rating. If you move the bar down below the middle, it'll become quieter and you can see it has a negative decibel rating. And let's say you want to do a custom fade in and you want to have a little bit more control over where your audio is or isn't raised or lowered. Right here on the audio track in the middle, there's something called add remove keyframe. You want to click that where you want the edit to start and then you can make a new keyframe by moving your little timeline scrubby here off to the right to whatever point you want the audio change to end and you can hit that same add remove keyframe it's right between the left and the right arrows right here and this time if i take my v tool pointer and i'm on that keyframe if you want to make sure that you're exactly on that keyframe you can use these left and right arrows to go backwards and forwards between any keyframes you have it's a really quick way to navigate them but then I can just take this arrow right here and drag this up or down. And as you can tell, it's dragging up and down based on this keyframe. And I can also move this keyframe left or right as well as I move it up and down. So if I move this particular keyframe on the left here all the way down, 
This will be totally silent. It says negative infinity decibels, which means it's quiet as can be. And then with the second keyframe right here up higher, it'll create a simple audio fade in for your video. But that's really the basis of your video. Once you're done, you can go ahead and hit Control S on a PC to save it or Command S on a Mac to save it. Premiere does auto save, but I tend to save my stuff all the time just in case I make a mistake or the program crashes, which is actually pretty rare for me, but it does happen. And I'm going to very quickly go over how to export your video inside Adobe Media Encoder, which is also part of Creative Cloud as an easy way to get the video out to post on YouTube or however you want to save it. So I'm going to open up Adobe Media Encoder right here. And I actually have this video already over here, so I'm going to delete this just so it's not in the way. And to do this, you just have to hit this plus sign right here in the upper left hand corner for add source. And then you want to navigate to the folder where you just saved your Premiere project. So this is it for me, Premiere tutorial. I'm going to open that up. And as you can tell, it opens up right here as the output file. So this is where it's going to save if you click on this destination. So this is going to save it in the same folder as my Premiere tutorial, but you can have this saved to your desktop or a particular folder or hard drive, whatever the case may be. I will say you want to tend to do this on the fastest hard drive that you have available, as well as when you're working inside Premiere, you want to be working on a fast solid state hard drive if possible. But once you're done and you have it named appropriately, you can change that in the file name field. You can hit save, but that's not going to actually start exporting this video. So one thing to keep note of is the preset right here. I have mine on YouTube 1080p since that's how I personally export most of my videos. But if you want to change that up for a different use, you can click this down arrow and then navigate through a ton of different options. There's an absolutely huge amount of options inside Adobe Media Encoder to push a video out. As well as on the side here, there's the preset browser. So let's say I want to make this YouTube 720p HD. I can just click on that and then click, hold, and drag it over on top of my media. And as you can see in the preset section here, it now says YouTube 720p HD. But I personally tend to do 1080, so I'm just going to click, hold, and drag that over back onto the bar here which will automatically update that. And you can also queue multiple files inside this exporter as well. So if you have several videos you want to render all at once, perhaps overnight, which is very common since rendering video is very slow and very CPU intensive, you can go ahead and do that. That's a pretty cool way to work. And there are all the same options on the side here from audio only to broadcast TV, cameras, cinema, all sorts of devices. So keep note of all that stuff if you need to export to something specific. But even when you just bring in your video from the basic form, it'll automatically apply what it thinks is a good preset. So you can just tend to do that most of the time unless you know you're doing something very specifically or you want to use a custom preset. But once you're ready to go, just hit this green play button. It'll start to render. And once it's done, it'll let you know. And then your video should be ready to watch. So that's it for the basic Premiere tutorial. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. I went over this somewhat quickly, but the basics are all there. Just hit I on your keyboard for the in point, O on your keyboard for the out point, and then Alt or Option on a Mac and Backspace to delete. Or you can also use the apostrophe sign to delete, and that'll bring everything that was in front behind it. And H is the key on your keyboard to bring up the hand tool to quickly scroll through this information. You can also slide this bar on the bottom if you want to go even faster or even expand the size of this bar on the bottom if you want to see more information. And space bar on your keyboard displays or pauses the video up at the top here so you can actually see what you're doing. But that's it. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming every week. Thanks so much for watching.